so welcome to the for today is project the motivating participant it's all about the motivating the stakeholders as such on the projects so moving on quickly to the next slides i'll just quickly um, give an introduction about myself and the company which i'm representing and then we'll get into the topic quickly so i have been a director and partner with prothot solutions for the last couple of years um, you can just go through the qualifications i have around 17 plus years of experience and plus um, conducted multiple project management training workshops across india um, have a quite a few followers on linkedin mentored around 1000 plus professionals and uh, before getting associated with pro thoughts and uh, into the training career since 2011 i worked with uh, some tier 1 companies those names are there worked in us for around 10 years before shifting back to india so that's about me in short um move on to the next slide about pro thoughts Um, so ProThoughts is all about project management. So we do a lot of trainings, a lot of consulting, a lot of software implementations. And when we say software, it's purely project management softwares. Okay. I'm just trying to be very quick with all these slides to save up the time. Um, and then we were among the top 100 institutions to look out for in the in 2015 by Times Review Magazine, CIO Review Magazine, by Times Group. So. And learn, enable, apply. Learn is training part. Enable is the software, and apply is the advisory or consulting services in project management. So we break up our entire offerings into three parts: learn, enable, and apply. Okay, it's all associated with project management. So now getting into the crux of the things. Um, so we have. Uh, the first slide we will talk about is what is a project and then why do we need a motivated team on the project okay so to talk about what is a project so the definition of a project a project is something which has a start date which has an end date it has to have a unique output there has to be a reason why it got initiated and there has to be a benefit which needs to be created out of it and once the benefit gets created out of a project it needs to be realized later on after the project gets transitioned into the operations so these are the pointers which actually define a project and then there are few examples if you look at it project has been into existence project management has been there for a long time even when taj mahal was created it was a project okay so output unique output was the taj mahal itself the smart city projects which are done by the government right now they are each of them is a project the crm implementations the database upgrades the reliance geo launch setting setting up a new factory or a plant and so on and so on we can keep on talking about a lot of projects across industries across domains okay so this is what a project is and now the next topic the next slide we will talk about is you need to look at a project in an interior in a bigger scenario where it is interacting with programs and portfolios so you will find people in the programs and portfolios who are also stakeholders in the project whom you need to ensure that they are motivated to okay so it's much bigger um, stakeholder set for the projects not only the project in its team okay now a project manager when we talk about a project manager a project is successful if if a project is successful it means the project manager is successful so the success of a project manager is defined by how successful a project is okay so now there are three pillars on which the project manager success is dependent upon so if you look at those three pillars one is the knowledge a pm has to be knowledgeable that's one second only a knowing is not enough you need to show results so performance is the second pillar and third beyond performance and knowledge how you deal with the stakeholders i'll just come to the definition of the stakeholders but how you need to deal with the individuals who are associated with you in the project so they all and how at times project might fail still you succeed as a project manager why because of the interpersonal skills okay so that is very important for a project manager 
so knowledge performance and interpersonal skills if you take up the first three characters of them kpi so these are the kpi for a project manager to succeed on a project okay so we define a kpi for a project so this is a kpi for a project manager to be successful now we will be focusing on only motivating on the stakeholders so now if you i talk about who are the stakeholders from a project manager's project management's definition perspective stand you a stakeholder is an individual or an organization who is associated with the project getting impacted by the project or can impact the project directly or indirectly okay so few examples if you look at it project manager himself is a stakeholder the project team with head with which he will be delivering the project that is a stakeholder the management whom he is dealing with upper management middle anybody upper higher up they are the stakeholders the client if there are any involved they are the stakeholders the end users the requirement givers anybody who is on the who will be eventually using the final output of this project they are the stakeholders the cross functional departments few examples are there many more can be there so any cross functional departments they are the stakeholders who are associated then vendors who we are outsource the work they will be the stakeholders auditors then in the non conventional or a traditional projects ngos political parties government authorities you need to consider them as stakeholders the competitors are also stakeholders if you are dealing in a competitive environment okay and then there could be many more domain to domain industry to industry project to project you will have to define so if you look at the top line any individual or organization who is associated with the project impacted by the project or can impact the project directly or indirectly okay so these are just a few examples stakeholder is a much broader term okay so most of the time when we talk about motivation we only focus on motivating the team project team you need to consider that at time you have to motivate the vendors you have to motivate the cross functional departments you have to much look at a much bigger picture okay now when we talk about the stakeholders there are several types of stakeholders so few of the like, you can categorize them into one the positive stakeholders who are supportive of the project who are working towards making the project successful negative stakeholders who don't want the project to succeed competitors could be one good example here okay upper management could be positive stakeholders most of the time so and then there are powerful stakeholders upper management at times auditors at times so there are a lot of them are powerful stakeholders they could be both positive or negative okay and then there are ignorant stakeholders ignorant means who don't care whether the project is going on doesn't go on whether it succeeds doesn't fails they least bothered about the project so ignorant stakeholders and then there are unaware stakeholders the stakeholders who don't even know that there is a project of certain type going on and they are getting impacted because of that or because of their certain actions the project is getting impacted okay so you don't you miss out on identifying them as stakeholders so these are the five types of stakeholders okay now how you need to deal with them and that is something that you need to know up front that will help you to decide how to what motivates them okay positive stakeholders most of them should be self motivated because they are positive because the success of the project defines their success okay the sponsor who is funding the project who is providing the funds to the project he is a positive stakeholder at time, most of the time why because it's his fund which is at stake senior management the senior upper management whom you are reporting to they are very interested in the project so they are all positive stakeholders most of the time okay and that's where you need to put the least effort to motivate them okay and if they are not motivated for some reason you need to ensure that they remain motivated because they are the primary drivers for the success of the project okay they are representing the project in front of the uh, company organization or outside in the market so positive stakeholders has to be self motivated or they have to be motivated this way or that you need to make sure but that is the easiest task probably for a project manager to motivate them second comes the ignorant stakeholders who are least bothered about the project okay so now they need to 
you need to create a reason you need to explain them the reason how they will benefit if the project succeeds okay you need to keep them informed for a lot of things these are the people who need to be in the cc of the emails who have to be sent out the information as an fyi so but you cannot ignore them they are not bothered about the project but if you ignore them they might convert into negative stakeholders who are talking against the project you really don't want that to happen so you want them to be talking positive about the project so you need to be keeping them motivated then comes the negative stakeholder this is where and if the negative stakeholders are positive then that's a big problem you have to figure out how to make them positive that time it's just the perception change their perception and they support the project okay so that is something you need to figure out who are the negative stakeholders if you can make them positive fine else how can you counter their negative impact on the project that is something you need to figure out how do you utilize the positive powerful stakeholders to counter their effect so negative stakeholders have to be identified and try to see if you can reduce their negativity try to keep them convert them into positive and make them motivated if not figure out a solution to that and then there is a powerful stakeholders powerful stakeholders may be ignorant stakeholders may be positive stakeholders may be negative stakeholders but the very important thing is to keep them motivated and to satisfy their needs even if they are not so interested in the project you their needs needs to be still satisfied okay so powerful stakeholders and negative stakeholders are the primary areas of concern that you need to know and then there are unaware stakeholders that that is where identifying them is important and then based on which of, of the other above categories they fall into you need to deal with them in that sense okay so these are the different types of stakeholders and how you can deal with them to motivate them that is very important then moving to the next slide okay so now this is something if you look at it the previous slide is somehow categorized into the four quadrants we actually have taken it up from one of our training programs so if you look at it more power less interest more less power more interest it's the four quadrants represent the four types of stakeholders and the fifth one is will be the negative stakeholders on the other side of the quadrant Okay, so this is how you need to deal and categorize the stakeholders and decide how to deal with them so that they remain motivated. And if not, you cannot motivate them. How to deal with them? It's very important to analyze each and every stakeholder or every type of stakeholder on the project. Okay. Now uh, there are a lot of motivational theories, which are uh, like a lot of the training programs apply try to apply these motivational theories only on the project team but the same motivational theories you can apply much beyond in an untraditional fashion into on the other types of stakeholders too and if you look at these motivational theories i don't know if you are aware of these any of them if you are aware fine i'll just take a break here so that you can note down all these theories we cannot talk in detail about each of them because if i talk about each of these theories it will itself take around more than an hour okay so um, maslow's herzberg's macgregor william auchi macleland and vikram victor vroom are the name of the individuals who actually came up with these theories i'll recommend you to note down the these theories names and just google up and research and go through these theories so that you know that how to apply these theories with the stakeholders with the team with the individuals who are associated with the project okay i'll just give you a short description i'll just take a break so if you could just note down then i'll talk about it I'm hoping you are noting down all the names 
that's why i've taken a break here and pause here so because it's not practically possible to talk in detail about each of them so so let's move ahead and if you want me to bring this slide back if you're comfortable to talk about it moving on side so you need to apply these motivational theories with the project team in particular as per the mini programs that train you on but if you try to use the unconventional way you can apply the same theories to a much bigger lot of stakeholders beyond the project team and still get the results out of them from them using the same theories okay now the most common forms of motivation the most common forms of motivational actions which every project manager takes and probably they have to be taken are like giving the recognitions and the rewards delegating the powers and the responsibilities to the team giving them the capability to drive things okay promotions then giving them challenging work if they want to learn their learning curve and also you need to give them challenging work at times the sense of achievement okay so these are the few common forms there could be quite a few more just listed down few of them so these are the common forms but there are a lot of uncommon forms which normally most of the projects uh, miss out because of which even after applying all these you still see the results not coming out like the attrition still happening the team members still complaining the stakeholders still complaining on many fronts so basically if you look at the uncommon forms of uh, motivation of the stakeholders that is actually should be able to take care of those types of problems so okay so it doesn't mean that you need cannot you should not be applying the common ones the common forms of motivation has to be applied but along with that you need to consider the uncommon forms of motivational um, motivations to be created in the uh, among the stakeholders too one a project manager has to work like a leader in current scenario when the complexity is increasing the team sizes are bigger the stakeholders diversities and complexities is huge the role of a project manager becomes much diverse more than managing a team he has to take up a leadership roles also not only as as a manager but as a leader the difference between a manager and a leader if i have to define in one sentence manager is somebody who who does the work what he can do and a leader is somebody who should do the work that he should means he, he does the work that he should do what he can do versus what he should do that makes a big difference between a manager and a leader okay and a leader creates followers if you have created followers in a team in a project like if the vendors are following you they do things because they see you as a leader if you say and they just do it because they have to follow your um decisions then they are self motivated or just because you are there they are motivated so that's where a lot of your effort to keep them motivated goes down and they will stick to you why because they see you as a as their leader so attrition can be controlled a lot and a lot of issues can be controlled that way second how can you create the followers like that by understanding their needs understanding what they want and catering to their needs going against the wind at times if needed stick to the team stick and support the team in at time a lot of unconventional things needs to be happening if you are able to do that you are creating followers among the stakeholders who will be sticking with you when you need them they are not going to leave you so easily so that's what understanding the needs of the stakeholders is very important and catering obviously it's not only understanding when i say understanding their needs it's catering to their needs also and then showing them why they should work towards the project to be successful how they will benefit out of that so showing their benefits if the project succeeds so you have to put yourself in their shoes and talk in their language if you are able to do that they are with you so that these are some unconventional thing which current project manager the recent time project managers miss out on they just try to dictate terms on the stakeholders and at times that falls out even if you give them awards but they are still dictating may not work okay you have to 
create followers. You have to understand why they are doing it and why they should be doing that. So these are the few uncommon forms of uh, motivational actions that you need to take on a project. Considering the types of stakeholder, you might have to twist a little bit. And so you have to be sensitive. That's the interpersonal skills at play of yours. Okay. And then now to understand these things about their needs and show them why they should be working towards the project, the unconventional part, you need to create a stakeholder register. When I say stakeholder register, you need to list down the names of the stakeholders. You can group them if you want to, but at least the powerful negative ones, you need to list them out. The designations in the company, which department they belong to, what is their role in the project, means what type of role they are playing on the project, what type of stakeholder, we talked about the five types, what type of stakeholders, what type of communication they prefer, what are their expectations. This is you are understanding their needs and interests is how they want to contribute in the project. Very important from that perspective, how you can utilize them on the pro project and how they want to contribute and how they can influence the project outcome eventually at the end. It may be blank. It may not be that every stakeholder has to influence, but if they have the power to influence the outcome, you should mention those. Okay, so these are the things. So understanding, talk, thinking about each individual so that when you talk to them, you are talking in their language, in their perception, you understand what they want. That's how you will be able to create followers in the project amongst the stakeholders. Okay, this is an exercise that every project manager should do. And it does give result. Most of the project manager ignore this part, assuming it's not needed. But this, at least for the long run project, long term projects, this is a must exercise, which we certainly recommend for every project manager. Okay, and then. So this is what I just wanted to talk about in short. So these are the contact details. Okay, so if you have any queries, you can always feel free to reach us out. You can note down the contact details. This is the ProThoughts uh, Pune office numbers, which I mentioned here. So if you have any queries, you can connect with me. You can we can have a one to one discussion if you have any doubts or anything. Okay, and you can visit our website. You can drop us an email. You can reach us out on the email uh, or the phone. Okay, so if you have any queries, question and answers. I'll be more than happy to take up. I hope you have noted down all the motivational theories. Each of them is a very powerful theories, which if you if you eventually apply on the project, that is bound to give results. So, uh, okay, so Suresh has a question. Suresh, if you could unmute yeah, yourself. Can, yes. can, uh, yeah, can you share that screen once uh, once more? That motivation oh. theories. Sure, I'm just going. To I'm in middle uh, middle of that uh, noting the theories, so I missed out. Oh, so it should be there on the screen now. Okay, yeah, yeah. sure. Thanks. So just one addition on this one, which I didn't cover at that time, is it's not like that you have to apply all the six theories on each and every project. Once you understand these mm -hmm. six motivational theories. You have to decide okay. on the spot which combination might work. Might be Maslow's and MacGregor's theory works the best on one scenario. In other scenario, probably the McLellan's and William Auchi's theory works. The best. So you have to make a call based on the types of stakeholder, the nature of the project, the scenario environment you are working in. Once you understand these six theories, yeah. you should have a yeah. position to decide. I have a I have a question, Arvind. Actually, so the theories are. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. These theories are based on the uh, situation base, or like uh, as per the project needs, I have to apply, or uh, uh, how it is like how how the theories are divided into. No, so everything is different. See, I'll I'll tell you one thing. Maslow's only talks about the needs of an individual. Actually, the first one, the Maslow's hierarchy of need is not a project management motivational theory. It's a, okay. I learned it when I was doing my engineering, when I, it was a general management course. I did it when I did my post graduation also. I did it as when I joined my management uh, in one of my organizations, they went, 
made me go through this training and that also I learned that. So it's Maslow's hierarchy of needs is one theory which is not specific to, I apply the Maslow's hierarchy of needs with my kids and it works. So you can apply a lot of these concepts outside of project management also. But now, so, but the other five, starting from Herzberg, still Victor Holmes, those are all created keeping the project management uh, project management in mind. Like say, for example, Herzberg's hygiene theory talks about that every project, there are two sets of factors. One factor which actually motivates the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. And then there are certain criteria. They, they have even talked about certain motivational points. And then there are another set of factors which are called hygiene factors, which are a must. Hygiene factors don't motivate the employees, but if you ignore them, that will lead to demotivation for sure. So certain points, you are just trying to avoid the demotivation. At the same time, you need to say that, okay, the demotivation part is taken care by taking care of the hygiene factors. On top of that, now how to, we are again back to neutral. Now we want to get into positive by motivating the employee. For that, there are motivational agents defined in Hertzberg's. So that's how they talk about. Okay. MacGregor's theory, they talk about the style of handling the deal, uh, the stakeholders. Theory X talks about more of a micromanagement. Theory Y talks about macro management. So it's all about how you deal with nothing to do with motivation as such. But eventually okay. it leads to motivational stakeholders. So William Auchi's okay. theory Z is an extension of theory X and theory Y came later. That's why it mentioned separately. Okay, but that's a new uh, uh, addition that recently came up. And then the McLaren's achievement talks about putting yourself in their shoes and think they perspective that okay how they can achieve something so you have to make them achieve something out of the project eventually in that process the project will achieve a lot and if project achieves a lot eventually you succeed right so okay. it's just the perception you need to figure out what works in the project and it's a combination it's just a different thought processes and if you get into the details of each theory each of them itself i can talk for 30 minutes if i have to get into in detail so okay. it has a lot of content in it, each of the theories. So if you get understand each of the theories and you apply them effectively with, see if you know them well, which theory will effectively work in your scenario is not a hard thing to figure out. It's actually application of that theory is where people miss out on. That's an extra effort that you have to put in. People lag out on putting that extra effort. It's not a rocket science. Once you know those theories, becomes very easy for you to apply. It's just that people still don't apply. It's a very common sense thing, but still don't people apply that common sense thing. Okay, okay. Okay, and you must have seen a lot of times the top leadership changes in an organization and within six months, the a lot of resuffling happens in the lower level, right? Along with the management. Yes. Why that's happening? Yes. They are applying these theories. That's why the when a leader leaves, a lot of people leave. Why they're leaving is because the leader is able to apply these theories very effectively. They do this. That's this is what they are doing at the top level. If, if you are able to do it, you are able to create a leadership in the organization, and you will become valuable. A leader is valuable only till the time you have followers. If you are able to create followers, you are not important because what you can do. You are valuable. You are important because of the team that you represent. If the team is powerful and team is sticking to you, you are powerful. You have to create that powerful okay. team who's sticking to you, listening to you. So that's what these theories will tell you how to do that. Okay. So yeah, nice talking to you. Thanks a lot other, for your time. No problems. Any other questions? Fine. Uh, nothing from my side. Yeah. So let the other folks see. I'm just muting you. Uh, so I see uh, quite a few more folks. So if anybody has any queries. I hope everybody have noted down these slides. Noted down all the theories from this slide. So going back to the last slide. So you can note down the contact details too. If you have any queries at any point of time, you can reach us out on these numbers. Okay. 
I tried to save a little bit of time by going through quickly over the initial few slides where about me, about the company and all, and directly jumping into the main topic. So I didn't spend time on that. So uh, hope um, that's okay. So I think if no questions as such, then we can stop. Um, best of luck for applying these theories. What I will recommend, spend 30, 40 minutes, 15 minutes to search on these theory on Google, go through them, very good knowledge base about these. And it actually really works magics if you apply them. So this is what I wanted to give you the. So first you need to identify who the stakeholders are. If I'm just quickly summarizing, you need to first identify who the stakeholders are. Second, what type of category they fall into based on that, how to deal with them. Okay, and then which theories apply to you. So results will automatically come. If you are keep able to keep them motivated, if you are able to understand their requirements, understand their expectations and everything, and you are able to work towards that, whether it be team, be the senior management, be the vendors, be the cross-functional department, they, everybody is going to talk good about you. You are going to be a star performer. Even if project fails, there will be people who will be supporting you, saying, no, this guy has to be the project manager for the next project, even though the project failed. Why? Because they have confidence in you. That's what this is going to show. So, okay, so just go through those theories and um, if you have any queries, please reach me out. Okay. Thanks everyone for dialing in and giving me hours time to explain you all this.